Well, la- last week, uh, ledge fishing, we're going to uh, elaborate more and talk more about some other baits and things you could use. Uh, but recap real, real quick, and we'll jump in. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, last week, we uh, I wound up talking too much. I take full responsibility. But uh, there's so much with ledge fishing uh, or offshore, uh, and, and just to we kind of to make it easier or to uh, scale it down where we can at least try to fit it in this time frame. Really, what I'm talking about ledge fishing is anything you're fishing that you don't see the bank. You're not throwing to something toward the bank, near the bank. This is going to be off the bank. It still could be in a creek. It just could be uh, a a hump or out in the creek, or it could be the creek channel. Uh, it could be the main river channel. And that's really what we're going to kind of dial this in or book in the conversation is we're talking about uh, Kentucky Lake Ledges, which, again, are uh, legendary across the country and across mm-hmm. the world. And we're going to talk about uh, current. The award-winning Tennessee Wildcast is on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, wildlife watching, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tennessee Wildcast. We're glad you're tuning in. Thanks for watching and listening. Uh, This week, we're we're going to have to keep moving on the ledge That's right. fishing we topic. We got so deep into it that it was, we ran out of time. Yeah. So we, so, we just had to do a reprise here. So we brought back uh, Bill Dance. To, I mean, oh, wait. No. Uh, Jason Holland <laughs> to help us out. I'm not nearly as good looking as Mr. Bill Dance. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got Mr. Jason Holland back with us. And he's going to uh, we're gonna recap a little bit of what we talked about last week, but also dive deeper into some of the stuff. No pun intended, because we are fishing a little deeper. We are. Um, uh, some of the things that we didn't get to cover last week so that's anyway. right a little more yeah. in depth yeah it's this time of year i mean there's so much when it comes to offshore or ledge fishing whatever term, terminology you want to use that you know we kind of got i got sidetracked i'll take full responsibility i get fired <laughs> up this is one of my it's probably my second favorite way to fish fall fish in the grass and nigga jack is by far my favorite oh, but neat. uh ledge fishing is right there because again you can go out and you can have you know 50 60 fish days that's not uncommon and so that's you do a lot of work and sometimes you only catch five or six and that's yeah. i still love it but man when you go catch 50 or 60 yeah that's when you live it fishing yeah right that's that's catching and loving every second of, yeah that's when you get back in the truck after fishing all day and you're exhausted because it's a thousand degrees and your side hurts a little bit from <laughs> setting the hook so many times yeah that's and your thumb looks like you put it in a meat grinder Yes, sir. That is, uh, that's what brings us back every uh, single time. Those pictures. I can only imagine. Yeah. Well, I want to co- uh, cover the, the raffle real quick. If y'all are following us at all, you know the raffle is going on right now. The Tennessee Conservation Raffle, uh, sponsored by our Tennessee Wildlife Resources Foundation. Ten prizes, ten packages, plus 100 additional prizes to be awarded. And that big item that everyone would love to have fifty thousand dollars toward a Ford vehicle. That's it. Fifty thousand dollar voucher toward any Ford vehicle from Mid South Ford dealers. Uh, there's a lot of those around Middle Tennessee and uh, and around this area, uh, even in Northern Alabama, I believe. There's a lot of uh, Mid South Ford dealers, so you got uh, many places to go find you a truck or a Bronco or. A, a Ford Taurus, if you want it. Tell you what, I love those new Broncos. Yeah, those are cool. Those are really cool. I may have to go ahead. I actually, I'll just go ahead and tell everybody's listening. Don't get excited about that Ford package because I've already won it. <laughs> just, I've already got my dibs uh, on it. So now, if your name gets drawn, <laughs> that's uh, going to be so weird. That's a fishing forecast, yeah. right yeah, there. Yeah, I feel like somebody's going to be uh, investigating oh, if oh, my prophecy. All right, it's, <laughs> you better be ready to pass it on. <laughs> Look, we're going to pay that one forward to somebody else. Uh, but anyway, we appreciate Bass Pro for for throwing in a, a boat this year. Uh, the one that started all the elk hunt package that's the premier elk zone one hunt with a rifle and boots and package from uh, Danner there um, Bass Pro again coming through with the UTV uh, the President's Island deer hunt final flight uh, waterfowl hunt I'll take that one too some of your friends four people can go on this one so that's cool uh, thanks to Academy for all their support this year, especially with Free Fishing Day, and then with throwing in a five thousand dollar gift card and uh, a lot of fishing gear can be bought yeah, there. Yeah, I'll take I'll take that one too. Yeah, yeah. The, Todd, write that down, will you? <laughs> That's the three I'll take, please. The okay. uh, turkey hunt package, Governor's one shot with uh, Preston Pittman. 
best of the west long range shooting uh, one of these days we're going to advertise these from the ground up so some of these get a little more airtime. uh the henry rifle with the foundation logo and Dude, the three star i mean that yeah that thing's killer mm-hmm that's Look good. A, I'll go ahead. Actually, I'm sorry, Todd. That's four. I need that <laughs> rifle, too. All right. Making sure we're all together. And then if... Uh, Last but not least, don't forget yeah. about the knives. Yeah, hundreds of, a hundred of those, right? Yep. So if you don't win one of the Big Ten, you got another hundred chances to take home a knife. So Yeah, I'm going to need about 10,000 chances based yeah. on my luck. But, you know, this could be the turning point. And those tickets break down. Did we go over go that? Ahead. Okay, one one ticket, just 20 bucks. Or you can get three tickets for fifty, mm-hmm. or you can get ten for a hundred bucks. That's the best deal going right there. And if you visit the TWRF website, uh, twrf.net or raffle.twrf.net, if you visit there, you'll see the countdown. You'll know exactly how many more days you've got to go. And uh, anyway, you get all the details there on their website. And yep. and the the money that gets collected from that. Our foundation is there to support our agency, and yep. And uh, last year's winnings went a long, long ways to uh, help do the federal matching dollars. You know, a lot of times uh, we get dollars from the federal government to do uh, uh, wildlife habitat and, and buy land sometimes, and, and a lot of different things. But there's a catch to that federal money. You got to have a match. Right. Usually a twenty five percent match to to make that happen. So, this really really helps and helps. Really, you, you can count that the that each of those dollars ends up being about four dollars. So, mm-hmm. yeah, wow, that's, that's amazing. I did not realize that. Yeah, yeah. there you the, go. So they'll just to make sure I'm clear. So for every dollar, in essence, it matches up to four dollars. Yeah, from the yep. federal government. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it, I don't know about everybody else watching, but obviously, uh, I live here fish here hunt here and so anything that i do that goes back to what i love to do and not just myself uh my family and friends and everybody else i mean what a great way that i could spend uh, personally i'm gonna obviously spend the hundred bucks and get my i want to better my odds yeah. still i'm still I, i've already got four set up with todd <laughs> so i want to better my odds to maybe win five <laughs> but the fact that hey i'm gonna give a hundred bucks i have a chance to win this but even probably more than likely, I'm not going to win based on my past history of luck. But the fact that my hundred now becomes four hundred, mm-hmm. uh, and that gets collected all together and goes to helping protect and also grow what I love to do and where I right. live. I mean, right? Where where do you get that? I blow a hundred dollars on a weekend and I have no idea where it's at or what I've done with it. Or I'll take my family out to eat and there's there you, you know go. that's a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, right there. so. Selfless promotion. Yeah. I've already won four, guys. You only have six chances, but uh, it's still a good feeling. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's fun. Last year, Brad Snedeker, the professional golfer, he yeah. he got the elk, uh, or he was the first one drawn, so he chose the elk, and then he passed it on to a, a wounded uh, veteran, and so that was pretty cool. Wow, that is awesome. He said, "I just wanted to support. I didn't even want to win, but he ended up winning and passed it on." So <laughs> how incredible is that? I can tell you right now, if I win the the truck, I may pass it on. The boat? Ah, I mean, you're really going to be testing my generosity. But anyway, uh, still a great cause. Yeah. And it goes to uh, everybody that's listening here. Uh, it, it goes back, I mean, it goes back to your home state. So yep, exactly. What a fantastic sure. way to do it. Well, la- last week, uh, ledge fishing, we're going to uh, elaborate more and talk more about some other baits and things you could use. Uh, but recap real, real quick and we'll jump in. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, last week, we. Uh, I wind up talking too much. I take full responsibility. But uh, there's so much with ledge fishing uh, okay. or offshore. Uh, and, and just to, we'll kinda, to make it easier or to uh, scale it down where we can at least try to fit it in this time frame, really what I'm talking about ledge fishing is anything you're fishing that you don't see the bank. You're not throwing to something toward the bank, near the bank. This is going to be off the bank. It still could be in a creek. It just could be uh, a, a hump or out in the creek or it could be the creek channel. Uh, it could be the main river channel. And that's really what we're going to kind of dial this in or book in the conversation is we're talking about uh, Kentucky Lake Ledges, which, again, are uh, legendary across the country and across mm-hmm. the world. And we're going to talk about uh, current. And so really what when we talk baits and the thing how we're fishing uh, or what we're fishing, those are our conditions. Other things that we talk about, again, with the one toward the bank, and so it's much easier. But this, just for context, is we're talking about Kentucky Lake Ledges, and we're talking about summertime, and we're talking about current flow. 
just as we go through these, keep that in your mind. That is the condition that we're fishing. The million different conditions, but we're going to have to try to try to yeah. squeeze it all in. Narrow it down, yeah. Yeah. So we hit the last time about crankbaits. Um, we talked about deep diving crankbaits. Uh, we talked about uh, anywhere between uh, baits with rattles. We talked about baits that uh, did not have rattles that were silent. And then we also talked about uh, big flutter spoons. Um, and little spoons. And little spoons. <laughs> well, that was relative what, to the to Yeah, the I mean, what's funny there. is that, I mean, typically when I, when I used to fish spoons, it was super cold. Uh, yeah, little, you know, little one and a half, two inch spoons. Yeah, a small guy. Um, and that's, but offshore ledge fishing, you're talking, this is a five inch Strike King flutter spoon. Uh, and then this is the Castaic Ben Parker Magnum flutter spoon, which I think is a seven or eight inch bait. Uh, so look, we hit on those. But what we we kind of hit real fast on, those are reactionary bites. And those are baits that are going to cause those fish to their predatory instincts to kick in. They're going to bite it because they think it's a bait or they just want to kill it. But then you said they get conditioned sometimes to some of those. That's 100% and correct. you got to change it up a little bit. You do. So when you when they first slide out there and all the fishermen start getting out, you can, those more uh, aggressive type baits, uh-huh. you can catch them. Uh, as they get later on in the season, they've seen a bunch of that. Or... The only other caveat to be would, when you hit that school and you pounded on them and you've got all the fish on aggressive baits that you can, then you come back with uh, less aggressive. Uh, and what I mean by that is that's going to be your uh, your jigs, your soft plastics, your slow moving baits. Uh, that's really where that kind of comes into play. So right after, once you catch them all out of school and they slow down, move to those baits. Or later on the season, uh, I, I'll give you an example. So. Middle of July, when I first go to my when I go to my first spot, I'll take the first three or four casts and I'll try something to maybe try to pick up that one or two more aggressive fish. And then on when I'm fishing that spot of that school, I throw them down and then just focus on um, bottom or slow moving baits. Uh, and that's what we're gonna hit on today. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna talk uh, jig heads. We're gonna talk the soft plastics, uh, and they're also going to uh, talk about one other cool uh, product. That is going to help you when you catch those deeper fish and you're bringing them up. Okay. And some of the things you got to deal with. All right. We good? We're going to hop right in? Let's yeah. Do Let's do it. All right. So, football time. Yeah. We're going to talk about three different types of jig heads. This is, um, if you can see it on the screen, it's just a, it's a souped up shaky head. Okay. All right. We're all familiar with the shaky head, you know, that uh, uh, eighth ounce or quarter ounce ball type head. And you put a worm on that and you fish that. This is the same version. It's just beefier. It's a three-quarter ounce. It's got a six-aught hook. So it is a big... Uh, big hook. It's a big, meaty presentation. And, you, you, again, you throw this on the bottom. I call it the stupid head. You throw it out, and you ain't got to be smart. You throw it out, and you just slowly drag it. Uh, and that's how you catch them. It, it's a slow-moving presentation. It's in their face. You, you throw it in their house. Uh, they're not going to bite it necessarily out of aggression uh, or being hungry. Uh, they may, but again, you're not triggering that reaction strike. A lot of the times, it just comes by their face, and their natural instinct is again. They don't. Well, my favorite saying is they don't have thumbs, mm-hmm. right? They don't. They don't have hands. <laughs> so the only way they're going to do it, they're just going to bite it. And so uh, this is great. And you can throw anything on the back of it. Uh, you can throw this is Zoom old monster worm. Uh, you can Texas rig this worm. Uh, in this scenario, we're talking about putting it on a jig head, but it, it's kind of a staple. I mean, the the Zoom old monster. Eh, that's just. That's what you throw. Uh-huh. Uh, I will throw in one tip. Uh, if you're on Kentucky Lake, summertime, if you're not throwing the plum color, you're missing the boat. Mm. You plum missed the boat. You plum missed it if you're not throwing plum. Uh, free tip. You're welcome. <laughs> but uh, throw plum in summertime. Pretty much, I mean, I say Kentucky Lake, but pretty much anywhere, that, that color just gets bit. Huh. Uh, again, if somebody, if somebody figures out why and can tell me scientifically I'm in, mm-hmm. all I know is it works. Uh, so... Make sure you've got. Don't know if plum. that's true, but it happened to me. I could not have said it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's a shaky head worm. Um, same type of presentation. This is just in the football style. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you're fishing more rock bottom or you're fishing uh, shell beds, it, it's a great uh, it's a great way. And the, the the shaky head that I showed first works great, but if you can see on it, it has a more arrowhead type. Uh, shape. There you go. Uh-huh. And so, if you're fishing around bigger rock, these have a tendency to they they dig in, wedged. Yeah, wedged. There you go. Where a football a football. How'd you like that? Oh yeah, football. You're welcome, Todd. <laughs> Try to fix it. Edit that out. My hillbilly <laughs> coming out in me. 
a football head. Uh, again, has that oblong shape, and so it works much better in rock, and we've talked about that before. Uh-huh. Same thing, uh, just a different uh, head. All right, this is a uh, football head, but it's called a wobble head. And for what that is, it is the football head style, but the hook actually attaches um, to a, what would you call that, another hook? <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go. It's basically you have a free swinging hook. Uh-huh. It's kind of like a swivel, but not really. And this can be fished a lot of different ways. You can slowly drag it. Most of the time, the way you want to fish this is uh, you want to fish it real slow. You fish it like a crankbait, only slower. So what happens, this is dragging. I'm sorry, not dragging, but you're slowly reeling this, and it's it's hopping. It's bouncing. Mm-hmm. And so you don't want to necessarily just keep it on the bottom the whole time, but it's, it's swimming along, and it's bouncing. And it's creating that action. And because of that pivot point, you get much more action out of your bait because yeah, it's free swinging. I can see that. Cool. Call it a wobble head. Uh, these are absolutely killer on the ledges at Old Hickory. Take a uh, Strike King called a Rage Menace. Basically just a real small, uh, it's a smaller scaled down version uh, of a uh, creature bait. Mm-hmm. And it's just got two little flappers on the back. It's very, uh, uh, it's not aggressive. It's pretty subtle. And... On this thing, it's just absolutely killer. Wow, two tips. One night. Yes, do not tell everybody. I'm just kidding. <laughs> tell everybody. I don't care. Uh, we're going to talk about the one thing we always consistently talk about. For some reason, somehow on this show, probably one of my favorite, just because it's so versatile in every scale, uh, is the Tokyo rig. Um, fish it the same way you do the other stuff. Just you know, put a, I put a three-quarter ounce weight, a half to three-quarter on the bottom of it, uh, and then you can turn around and put – you can put a big worm on it or you can put a, a crawl-type bait. Uh, you can just put a, a, a straight stick worm on the back. However, yeah. uh, just my – I say this every time. Just experiment. Yeah. If you're throwing it and you know you're in a spot where you know there's fish and you throw it three or four times, five times, you're not getting anything, you know, soft plastics are cheap. Mm-hmm. Pull it off, throw another one on there until you figure out. And here's the great thing. Once you figure out for the day really what they're keyed on, because there's a lot of reasons why they're keyed on it. We don't have time to go into barrier metric pressure. We don't have time to go into pre, post, front, all that stuff. Long story short is once they get dialed into it for that specific day, unless there's a big change of the, you know, of the weather uh, that day, that's what they're on. And so once you get it figured out, hey, they want, they want a 12-inch worm. You keep you keep throwing a twelve inch worm, you're uh-huh. going to get bit no matter where you go. Or uh, maybe they want something small, maybe a little four inch, uh, you know, uh, Berkeley Pit Boss or a uh, Sweet Beaver or whatever, just a small creature bait. They they're dial they're they're focused or the bait that they're chasing is a smaller profile. Mm. Once you do that, you can bounce around under the spots in the lake and it's going to get bit. So just experiment, have fun with it. Don't take it too serious. <laughs> uh, I I, am, I will. I mean, I can always talk about myself and not get in trouble. I am the the most guilty person on the planet for taking it way too serious. I forget it's supposed to be fun. Right? <laughs> if you guys know this or not, it's supposed to be enjoyable. Uh, and I uh, I have a tendency to to overcomplicate it and miss the fun in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and don't do that. Don't don't do that. Enjoy it. Experiment yeah. with it. And if you don't catch anything, then you didn't catch anything. Go back next week. Yeah. Keep trying. Uh, we talked about that Tokyo rig. Put whatever you want to on the back of it. Uh, a really great bait this time of year. Especially when it gets a little bit later uh, during the offshore season, all that means is it's the the shad, especially on the Tennessee the TVA the gizzard shad. Mm-hmm. All right, you got threadfin shad, threadfin shad, and you got gizzard shad. Gizzard shad, I mean, they can get 10, 12 inches. I mean, they can get really good size. As it gets later, they continue to grow, obviously, and so the later part of that offshore season, those gizzard shad are getting bigger, and it's a great time to throw a big swim bait and. It's not a lot of fun to fish. I, I, I mean, I'll tell you. I mean, it's you throw it out and slowly roll it. It's not a lot of action. It's uh, it's a lazy man way to fish. But and it's a simpler way. I mean, it, it is. It is much simpler. Uh, if you're one of those guys, I, I, I mean, I'm high strung. So I mean, I want I want moving, shaking. I'm just <laughs> wide open. Uh, it forces me to slow down. Um, but it is a simpler way to fish. And for guys that are not like me that enjoy a more a more methodical way, all right, just a more slow a slower paced. Mm-hmm. Swim baits are killer because you're going to catch the biggest fish typically in the school because you're throwing something like this, which is a yum yum money minnow. Uh, this is the five inch version. Uh, I throw a five, a six, and a seven inch version. I mean that's a it's a big bait, mm-hmm. uh, and typically you're going to catch some really big fish with it. 
I like the Yum Money Minnow. Uh, I use it typically on this head. This is a, a what's called an underspin. Basically, it's just a big uh, jig head. This has got a, I believe, a five aught, and then it's got this little uh, spinner or uh, blade uh, on the bottom of it. Yeah. And all it does, it just gives a little bit more flash. Uh, I've got some that are built like this with the uh, with the blade. Then I have some without the blade, mm -hmm. uh, and it just really depends on, again, experiment, guys. You're throwing it. See and, which one works. Yeah, you're throwing it without the uh, without the blade, the flash on it, not getting bit, then just cut, retie, throw it with the blade, see if that changes things. I always like a blade. I, I personally, I, I like it just, it makes me feel like I'm adding another layer. Yeah. Another attractant to it. Yeah. And sometimes that it could be too much, uh, and so... That's why I like to have both, but nine times out of ten, the, well, every time, I'm going to pick up the, you know, with the blade on it, and then from there, I'll scale back. Because, again, I want to layer every advantage I possibly can. Sight, sound, scent, mm -hmm. all of those senses that the fish have, I want to tap into as many as I possibly can. Yeah. And then I'll scale back if, you know, if I'm too aggressive uh -huh. and it just doesn't look natural. So, yeah. uh, swim baits, throw them out, let them hit the bottom, slowly reel them. I, really that simple you can change it up a little bit um and we'll we'll, talk, we'll actually we'll hit on it now sure you, it's called stroking it started with called stroking a jig all right so three quarter ounce jig pretty i mean everybody knows how to fish a jig if not watch this go back and watch the show youtube it mm -hmm. anyway we won't spend a lot of time on it but what happens is when times are uh on the Tennessee river where they're not pulling a bunch of current all right so it's just there's very little current flow You've got to try to get them fish if they're not an aggressive, they're not hungry. You got to you got to get their brain triggered, right? And then so to do that, a jig coming by, uh, in his mind, it's just a slow crawl dad. If he's not really feel like feeding, uh, he's probably not going to do anything. But you take that and with, when you stroke a jig, what you're doing is you're allowing some line to get out, so you got some slack, and then I am going to swing it straight up as hard as I'm setting the hook. But all I'm doing is I'm snapping that slack. And what happens is right at the time of the jig, so I'm, I'm set the hook yeah. style, all that slack gets picked up. And right there at the very end, it actually, the jig will shoot off the bottom straight up like a rocket. And I don't move it very far because all I'm doing is I'm just snapping that slack. Uh -huh. And that jig will shoot, shoot right off the bottom and then slowly come back down. And what happens when you get, typically when you get bit is on two scenarios. When you first pop it and it hops off the bottom real aggressively straight up, instinct. He just snaps over there and grabs it. Can't help himself. <laughs> or what will happen is, if say they're suspended about a couple, two or three feet off the bottom, when it hits the when it hits its peak and starts coming back down, that's when they'll hit it. Mm. Uh, it is a great bite. Uh, it is super aggressive. They're not biting necessarily because they're hungry. It's just their predatory instinct kicks in. Uh, just kind of like when you get hit in the knee when they're checking your reflexes <laughs> at the doctor. Same exact thing. You can't. People. Yeah, you can't. You can't help it. <laughs> same thing in their mind. That thing snap. It's the same way you fish a spoon. By uh -huh. the way, on a flutter spoon, you do the exact same thing. You have some slack, and you are going straight up with it, and really aggressively, and you're pulling all that slack. And at the very end is when your bait shoots up. You don't want to do that when you've got your line tight, and you try to do that. What you do is you wind up pulling that jig eight or ten feet away. Oh, well, man. you want that thing. You want that bait to shoot straight, straight up. up only move i mean you're going to move forward some you just it's just natural physics and momentum it, yeah. uh, a foot or two but you want that thing going straight up uh, and the same thing with the spoon mm -hmm. you want it to go straight up the spoon bite is a lot of fun what's hard about the spoon bite is you're not going to necessarily you're going to feel the bite but it's not going to be a big thump because what a, when they usually hit a flutter spoon is you'll you'll hit it and it'll come up the bottom you know shoot straight out the bottom and it'll start to flutter down. As soon as it starts to flutter is when you get hit. Or they'll hit it on the way up, and you'll you'll miss the bite. And all of a sudden, you just feel that thing get real heavy. Dude, it's a ton of fun. <laughs> it's an absolute ton of fun. It can be frustrating because you got, I mean, this is, I think, an ounce. And I believe the Magnum Spoon is two. Mm. Don't quote me on that, but somewhere in that range. It's heavier than that. Yeah. It does, And yeah. so, and it may be. I'm just strictly going on memory. <laughs> Todd, maybe we have to edit that, that out because I'm way off. But I think it's somewhere in that range. But what happens is they bite the hook, and then the problem is you got all this weight. Oh, yeah. So they'll jump, and that thing will – this will actually work almost like a plug knocker. If you guys mm -hmm. ever get hung up and you drop a plug knocker down and try to get your bait out of a tree, yeah. 
the spoons will actually like uh, act like a plug knocker and hit the top of that and pop it out. You're going to lose them. Uh-huh. Rattle trap fishing. We've all fished a you know a rattle trap yeah. or that type of bait. Have a tendency to lose some. It's just because there's a you know really big pivot point for them to shake it loose. But anyway, how are we doing on time? We good? Yeah, we got about three minutes. Three minutes. All right, so we're going to hurry up. Hog farmer. Uh, this is a wobble bait. Uh, we won't go into a lot of the specifics of it, but uh, it's a great bait to team up with uh, the Castaic. I believe this is called the uh, Jerky J. Guys, I'm going to tell you, it is like reeling in a tennis shoe. <laughs> it just, it's big. But it catches fish. And it catches massive amount of fish, huh. and it catches big ones. Um, this is actually a real big Tennessee River secret. That is no joke. There has been more tournaments won, big tournaments on the TVA chain, using this this exact setup, the Jerky J with the hog farmer this is the uh, one ounce you got three quarter to one ounce uh it's it's not a ton of fun to fish because it is i mean you're it's a lot of resistance as you bring it in uh-huh. uh, but dear lord it's a ton of fun when they bite it the big <laughs> ones um all right so we'll talk real quick on the soft plastic side of things for the tokyo rig um any worm I, i'm a big fan of the tokyo rig with the missile baits uh this is a 6.5 inch quiver it's a fantastic setup you can fish it deep or shallow Obviously, we're talking about fishing it deep. It's a fantastic bait to use. Mm-hmm. One thing we did, I didn't bring, I don't have it out here with us, but I do need to mention it. Um, if you're fishing out deep and you're not getting bit, just pick up the ball and chain, tie on the Carolina rig, <laughs> and again, I get you. It's not that much fun to fish. It's just throw it out and drag it back, but it's the one thing that will consistently get bit offshore. Uh-huh. Because if they're aggressive or if they're um, domicile, it doesn't, they're, they're going to bite. The Carolina rig. It's just it's it's too easy of a meal for them. Um, they're gonna bite it. So mm. I tell all this: if you've got one rig, you're gonna go out and fish deeper with. Tie on the Carolina rig. You, you can never you can never go wrong. On the back of it, you can use a straight tail worm, uh, or if they're a little bit more aggressive, we'll say they're pulling some current. Um, the standard has always been the uh, brush hog, mm-hmm. the Zoom brush hog, the full size one. Uh, guys, you're gonna get bit. You just I get it. It's the ball and chain. They call that for a reason, but it just works. So, uh, when we'll I talk about that, you can always throw the D bomb uh, or a creature bait on the back of a Carolina rig. I use the D bomb on the back of my jigs. A lot of fun. Um, kind of talked about the staple, which is a zoom. Um, is that the you, color you talked about? No, plum uh, was. No, plum is the color. This is June bug. I mean, it's it's June bug, green pumpkin uh, are the staples any time of the year. Plum in the summertime just it, it outshines them a little bit, but you can still catch them on this. Yeah. The other thing we'll talk about real quick is venting your fish. Uh-huh. All that means is when you're pulling them up from being deeper, you hook them at 25 feet and you, I mean, you just crank on them and you pull them straight off the bottom. What happens a lot of times if they've been down there for a while is that their swim bladder, uh, which basically controls their buoyancy, that's what takes them up and down, yeah. doesn't have time to acclimate to uh, the pressure, right? So. Sure. As you come up, that air expands, right? When you're down low, it gets tight. All yep. the pressure as you come up, it expands. If you remember scuba diving, you know what I'm talking about. Well, you have to do something for that fish. If not, uh, it, it'll kill them. Um, so a company called Ventafish, ventafish.com, uh, made a tool. Uh, it's just, if you can see, that's a hypodermic needle. Uh, you can just get a plain hypodermic needle. Won't, t- won't have the time to go into how to do it. YouTube it, super simple. You go in, and all you're doing is you're letting the air out. Pressure. Yes, sir. It just gets that pressure so that fish won't die. Yeah. Uh, You don't want to kill them. Mm -hmm. Um, If you're if you're real, that's turn me back up. That's tournament fishing. If you're going to put them in the live well, if you're out fishing and you're going to catch them and throw them right back, don't worry about it. Yeah. Because all he's going to catch them, reel them up, look at them, take a picture, and you throw them back in. He's going straight back to the bottom, uh, and obviously to decompress that uh, swim bladder. So that's only for if you're going to keep them uh, tournament fishing, hypodermic needle. Jason Holland Fishing, check me out. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Don't forget the three main things. It's your faith, it's your family, and your fishing. Thanks again, guys. I, I love coming and doing this show. It's one of my favorite things to do, so thanks for having me. Yeah. And uh, hopefully I didn't mess up too bad and I get back invited again. So <laughs> We'll see. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks for watching. Thank you, Jason. We'll see you next time.